if you could be any glyph, which would you be and why? Devonagri Ha, because it's happy and it's comfy and it has a big value. A G, a double story, lowercase italic G. If I could be any glyph, I think I would be the lowercase E. I think the lowercase E is quite an expressive extrovert, char extrovert character. You can, it can be anything you want. It can be you know, nice and sober, it can be geometric, it can be a little bit quirky. Uh, and and it, it has this lovely swoop, you know, kind of like the crossbar going round and you can have a beautiful termination. I think the, the lowercase E is good. Delta Ma grew uh, kind of organically throughout the years, it started very small to what it is today. Did you anticipate this growth? Did you plan it to happen? Did you think it's going to be the way it is, the size it is right now? I have to be honest, I never anticipated that it would be the size it is now. I mean, currently we are about 45 people, mostly based in, the, in London, and uh, I never had a plan to grow it. You know, initially we were like seven, eight, nine, ten people in that, that order, and then we just get it, got so much work that we had, we had to grow as a business. And that, of course, brought its own challenges as well. You know, when you're a small business, you know, five to ten people, you can make decisions from one day to the next and you don't really have to worry too much about planning too much into the future. Once you're 45, 50 people, it changes everything. Uh, it makes communication within the business much, much more difficult. Uh, and then you, of course, have to worry about wages. You have to start thinking about getting the work in continuously to pay everyone and so on and so forth. So the, the, the organizational changes were phenomenal, you know. And at the same time, at that kind of size, you also want to make sure that you maintain the quality of the work, that you can maintain the creativity so that the designers who work there don't feel like machines, you know, don't feel like in a production line. And that's, that's, that's one of the challenges. Yeah. Uh, and you also have to tr find a way to stay agile as a business, you know, that you can react to a new technology, you can react to a new uh, design train. I never anticipated it, and yeah, I'm, by and large, I'm actually very happy, you know, the way it turned out. You know, you, I do get the odd day here where I'm thinking, oh, it was nice when we were only five people and we could just do whatever we wanted, you know. But, but being large, you know, gives you the opportunity to get onto really exciting projects. You know, being involved in uh, like what we're doing now with the open source, you know, uh, movement. Uh, you know, what B Bianca was talking about in the conference. You know, that we can do that because we have the size, because we have the structures, and and that's very exciting. I started the company in 1991, and it's obviously at the beginning it was just myself. Uh, working from you know the spare room in the house, and it was really funny at the beginning. The first two years, I was just working from that bedroom, and sometimes I would not leave the house for four days. And you know, you get weird, you know, when you don't leave the house. You you see people, you look out the window, and you see people, and think, oh, he's a drug dealer or something. And that was this, the time when I said, I need to get out. I need to have a studio. So I got myself a little studio, and then eventually had my first employee and you know and then it started just like growing slowly and organically you know and um, I have to say now 25 years later we're still here and we have this size and and my role has changed you know I, to be honest I haven't drawn a character in about 10 years and there are moments I miss it uh, but most of the time I'm actually very very happy in the role I am now I'm, I'm I call myself a roving ambassador, and I go out to speak at conferences, I meet clients, you know, and, and I do, you know, occasionally workshops in design agencies or at universities as well, together with my colleagues, you know, at Dalton Mark, and, uh, and together with Ron Carpenter, who's our most senior designer and actually the mentor in the place, you know, we're mentoring the young people as well, and together with my very able board of directors, you know, we're, we're trying to set the strategies and and of Dalton Mark, you know, and, and, and try to anticipate what the future will be and, and that kind of stuff and, and try to contribute to the industry and, and yeah, that kind of thing. In your training, you were firstly trained as a typesetter, a, a role which I find it's very repetitive, it's like a solo uh, action, and it's very different from what you do today, from your role in Dalton Mag. Uh, so, so my question to you is, do you see any traces of this training right now in your uh, current position or current role? 
I think the training that I had as a typeset provided the foundation for what I'm doing now. It gave me a deep insight into the whole business of type, typography, printing, what well, the entire printing industry of which type design is part of. And it allowed me a way of thinking which maybe today, you know, the younger generation don't benefit from anymore. You know, young generation goes to university, you learn your design craft at university, and it's, it's maybe a more academic approach to it. And I think whilst it is obviously very valuable to have that academic input, I do believe that maybe there is a certain amount of practicality missing, if that is the right word. And um, maybe a more vocational, craft-based approach to your work um, when you have to actually plan your work. When you did hot metal type, you really had to think about what you were doing because it was so time-consuming to do it and so expensive to do it. So you had to do much more preparation before you actually started thinking about doing it. And that, obviously with digital me media, that has gone lost a little bit because everything is immediate. You can draw something, you don't like it, you know, 30 seconds later it's better or different or whatever. So you don't have those restraints anymore. But I'm not sure whether that is a good thing. And I also think having been trained in the traditional printing methods, and by traditional I mean in metal type, letterpress printing and all that, having been trained in those methods, um, has also, from a craft point of view, given me the expertise to draw type, you know, when I started Dalton Mark as well, because you, I understood the physicality of a letter. You know, when you pick up a piece of metal type, you know how wide the character is, you know what the, you feel what the spacing is, you understand point size. It's not point size in a digital thing where it's an abstract construct. It's, it's, it's a physical thing, and you understand that. You know, it's... it's you know, yeah, it's, and I, I think it carries through, you know, definitely. And sometimes in the young people, in the younger generation, the young designers we have, where that background isn't there, you know, or where maybe people have had a week, you know, let the press workshop or something, I can see there is a desire, you know, for that physical understanding. You were talking about you now with the size of Dalton Mag have to plan things in advance. And actually you were saying that as a typesetter, you also had to plan things in advance. So maybe that's like the connection continuing on. Yes, it is. And it's actually total contradiction to what I am as a person. I quite like to, to do things off the cuff, you know, at the spur of the moment. And I have an idea and I want to execute it straight away. That training of thinking in, in, in advance, I think it has helped, you know, with changing the business and to think long term, you know, two years, three years, five years into the future, what's going to happen, how are we going to plan things. It definitely has helped, you know, and, and it, it's, it, it helps me to restrain myself, you know, in, in, in my chaos thinking that I have. I mean, you should see my desk, you know, it's, it's chaotic. I know where everything is, you know, uh, but it's, it's not planned. If you know where anything is, it's not chaotic. It would be chaotic if someone would organize it and then it would be completely lost. Well, that's how I work anyways. And my, my desk is a chaos as well. What would you like the ATIPI attendees to take home with from your and Alessia's talk yesterday? I think that designers need to start thinking about the end user. And that's really what we wanted them to take home. And that's really also been the message, you know, that we have been trying to give over the, in the last two ATIPIs in, in our talks, think about the end user. When you design, you're de not designing for yourself. Because if you're designing for yourself, then you're an artist. And if you want to be an artist, that's fine, but then don't pretend to be a designer. You know? As designers, we have a job to do, which is make the world better, make a product better, make a better service, you know, help people achieve whatever they want to achieve better. But for that, you need to understand the user you need to design with the user in mind. And that's really what we're trying to get into people's heads. Um, we also want to put across that design cannot work in isolation, as much as science cannot work in isolation. I think we are, we are possibly in a, in a great, living in a great time again where 
where you have different disciplines, you know, science, technology and design starting to converge again, and that can only be a good thing. Uh, very much like the Renaissance happened, where you had like different people come together with different skills and actually sharing their knowledge, sharing their expertise to improve what was already there. You know, and, and that's really what we're trying to do, and Alessia and I, we're trying to bridge that gap between science and design and, and create a creative interchange.